I'm Debbie Calden. It's great to be here at the new Magic 102.9. Philadelphia is not only a city with a rich music history, it's a city with a long history of fantastic radio DJs. And I'm honored to be joined by one of the very best right now. She's been at 102.9 WMGK the past 26 years, 10 years at WISP before that. Debbie Calton. Hey, Debbie. Wow, when you say it like that, Chet, it, it makes me feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. All right, Debbie, let's see how much ground we can cover in 10 minutes or so. We think okay. of you as a longtime Philadelphian, which you are, but you weren't born in Philly. Where are you from, and how would you wind up in Philadelphia in 83? Okay, well, my dad was in the Air Force, so I moved all over when I was growing up. My parents were from North Carolina, so I kind of considered that my home base, although I certainly have lived in Philadelphia longer than I've lived anywhere else. I ended up here, I was working at a station in Chicago, and as often happens in radio, they were bought, sold, everybody got canned or left, and I had friends who came here to Philadelphia, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just go and see what Philadelphia is all about, too. Or I was going to meet with program director at the time at WMMR. When I got into town, he happened to have been called away. There was such a competitive nature, MMR and YSP at the time, that YSP heard I was in town for an interview. They said, come over here, we'll hire you. So <laughs> that's how I ended up here. I could have been in MMR all these years. Who knew? <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> Indeed. Now, Debbie, because I'm talking to you for our Philly Press Box radio podcast, I need to ask, have you adopted any or all of the Philadelphia sports teams, any one you root for more than others? I was just in Punta Cana, and we were there for the Eagles game on Sunday, and we had all of the TVs and Every single bar and every single place that had a TV turned to the Eagles game. So, yes, and I'm very happy to have been here with the Super Bowl and all of that. So, love the Phillies. I, I, what can you say? Philadelphia is such a huge sports town. I was never really a sports person, but I became one here. I got gotcha. you. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you've had the same midday shift at MGK since the mid-'90s. You've been doing the noontime Nuggets feature every day forever almost. That's pretty uncommon in this often fickle radio business. You know, I wanted to look into that. I haven't done research yet. It possibly is one of, if not the longest-running feature, you know, by the same name on Philadelphia Radio. I don't know for sure. I actually, at YSP, I took it over from Randy Cotts. It started when he was on the air there. And then when I came to MGK, YSP still had the rights to the name, so we called it the 70-minute lunch hour here for a while until the name rights were released, and then it became noontime nuggets here again. So it did have, like, a few years where it wasn't on the air. But, yeah, it's... It's a very long-running feature. Yep. Now, you and MGK made a big announcement a few months back. You are retiring as of I December am. 6th after yes. 26 years behind the mic there. The big question, why, Debbie? Why? <laughs> There's no particular reason at this point in time, because this is the best job I could ever have. I mean, people are like, where are you going to go? It's like, why would I go anywhere else? I mean, I've got the best job right here. I'm just ready to have a little bit more free time. My husband's a touring musician. I'd like to be able to go out on the road with him a little bit without having to worry about how much vacation time I have. I have a lot of different family things that I'm going to be able to help out with. So, you know, we'll see. And I also do stained glass. I'm looking forward to spending more time with stained glass. Nice. And I heard you have a lot of books lined up to read, which is nice. I do. Oh, you were listening today. I heard, you? yeah. I heard. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of your husband, Chip, is it true that you met him at a radio station promotion? I did, yes. I was uh, working at YSP at the time. I was uh, the promotions assistant as well as doing a part-time air shift, and I was blowing up all these balloons. He was a guitar player in the band, and he came over and was like, there's an easier way to do that. So, yeah, that was back in probably 84. We've been married almost 31 years now, so yeah. Wow. Hey, as you mentioned, the radio station very recently sent you down to Punta Cana. You actually did your daily air shift from there at a Hard Rock Hotel, sunny and 80 degrees most days while you were there. I'm sure that was a tough gig, Debbie. You know, and i got to tell you, while I was there, I'm thinking, why am I retiring from this job? <laughs> when I'm offered a live broadcast like this, that was actually probably the greatest parting gift that I could have ever been given. That came about really quickly, and they said, would you be willing to go, you know, in your last couple of weeks here? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right, something really cool that MGK and you have been doing the last few weeks on the station's website is 30 Days of Debbie. Lots of great stories from you and memorable interviews you did, some crazy phone calls you've taken. I was laughing out loud at the guy who had all sorts of trouble hearing you telling the name of the door song, Soul, uh, Soul Kitchen. Soul Kitchen one. <laughs> What's it called? Soul Kitchen. Ch Sarah Kicking? No, Soul, S-O-U-L, Kitchen. Soul Kitchen. S-A-U-L? No, S-O-U-L, <laughs> like your heart and soul. Soul Kitchen. Oh, Soul Kicking. No, Kitchen, <laughs> like a place where you cook. Kitchen. Soul Cooking. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was yeah. right. And you admitted to sort of stalking Jackson Brown. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Running
I've had a lot of experiences with him over the years, and to my great chagrin, he never seems to remember me. I always <laughs> like, remember that time? It was like, good. But, um, yeah, a lot of good stories there, and it's been so much fun. I have to say, a lot of these things I had on cassette, so I've had to transfer all kinds of files, you know, from cassette to digital, yeah. and it's been really, really fun to go back and listen to all these tapes that have been sitting in a box in a closet for years. And this was actually one of these 30 Days Things uh, a feature. Artists frequently do station IDs or personalized <laughs> IDs for jocks. Did you have a favorite? Out of all those, to have Grace Slick say my name was way up there. Way, way up there. Absolutely. And Patty Smith, that was huge. This is Patty Smith on the road in Finland wishing Debbie Calton congratulations on 25 great years at MGK. Congratulations, Debbie. Yeah, I mean, she even stretched it out a little bit. It was really nice. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say Alice Cooper saying. You're listening to that hot little Debbie Calton on Philadelphia's number one classic rock station, 102.9 MGK. Well, that's always fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it true John Entwistle of The Who insisted on being in a bathtub when you interviewed him? Yeah, that was in Denver. He was like, yeah, I'll do your interview, but you have to do it in the bathtub. I'm like, what? And, you know, it was very innocuous. I mean, it was no water or anything like that, clothes <laughs> on and everything. But that was just sort of his quirky sense of humor. And I sure wish. There are no pictures. There were no cell phones back then. So there are no right. pictures and there's no audio from that. But I'd love to be able to find that. Hmm. Now, this is pretty cool. You became a Grammy winner seven years ago. Explain. <laughs> Well, I can't really say I'm the Grammy winner. I was a part of a Grammy-winning project. Yes. Uh, but it was the album all about bullies, big and small. I was asked to do a couple of reads of some poems that were included on the album. And it just so happened that year the topic of bullying was very, very prominent in the uh, national, you know, it, it was gaining national attention. And so the album itself was nominated for the Grammy, and we thought, well, this would be really fun to go out there just to hear the name called out. And then when they said that it won, and I went up on stage with, I don't know, probably about 10 other people, and I could never have imagined in a million years that I'd find myself on stage at the Grammys. Pretty awesome. All right, yeah. Debbie, let's finish up our chat with a game of Fast Five. Five questions, five simple answers. Try to keep them brief so we can get them all in, okay? Okay. All right. Number one, your old pal, also a Philly radio legend, Anita Gevinson, wrote a tell-all book a few years back. Might we one day see a Debbie Calton penned book? Uh, not quite as tell-all as hers. <laughs> I got you. You've, of course, been to a slew of concerts. What's the best one you've been to over the past 10 years? The past 10 years? Oh, gosh. Probably every Bruce Springsteen concert. Uh, Stones for me in 2013. That'd well, you know, and the Stones this last time was pretty cold, too. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's a tough question, Chet. Not fair. I know, I know. Number three, what was the craziest radio promotion you were involved in? Oh, my gosh. Well, I was just talking about this on 30 Days of Debbie. We did something we call Beatlestock, mm -hmm. where we pretended that the Beatles were reuniting for a concert, like on the level of a Woodstock kind of thing. Yep. And we did that all day long. We completely stayed in character, sound effects, and we had a map even in the studio so we could all refer to the same layout and people were calling all day long it's like wait the Beatles got back together where is this how can <laughs> I get tickets <laughs> so I'd have to say we pulled it off that's pretty awesome number four Philly's four major sports teams all have mascots the Fanatic Swoop Franklin and Gritty who's your favorite oh I love the Fanatic personal close personal friend I got you and number five Debbie you're retiring so you can fess up what artist or song have you had to play hundreds or thousands of times over the past 26 years that you'll be happy to never play again most Billy Joel songs. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't care what you say anymore. This is my life. Uh, you know what? I shouldn't say that. American Pie. I, I, I'll be all right if I don't have to hear American Pie again. <laughs> okay. And a bonus question. I know you really appreciate all of your listeners. What would you say to them as your time on Philadelphia Radio winds down here? That they have been a part of my family all these years. That's what I'm going to miss the most is talking to them every day. Debbie Calton, as I knew it would be, this was a blast. Congratulations on the retirement. Enjoy your holidays, and thanks for visiting Philly Press Box Radio. Oh, thank you, Chad. The leaves are falling 